Welcome back to the shop. Today, we're gonna to go ahead and install the uh, PowerMaster starter on the 68F100. This has been sitting on the parts bench here for a while. Any of you who've been watching the channel for a while, remember it's the 9506M that we're gonna use. Uh, it's a special model for uh, a bit of extra header clearance. I've got the uh, Headman headers on there with the gaskets they came with, but uh, I finally got a set of the uh, Remplex in stock here. 3008, which will fit uh, multiple FE applications. So we'll throw these on there after we uh, pull the header out to uh, get this starter in there. So I went with this one to free up some space, as well as the fact the uh, old starter's getting pretty tired and worn. Now with this one, you also have to make yourself a little jumper wire if you're using the stock Ford solenoid that's uh, mounted on the fender there. So what I did is uh, recommend some 12 gauge. I went and made this little jumper, just with ring terminals and shrink tube. So this should fit nicely on there. I don't like using uh, just your standard crimps. Um, these ones here are just bare metal terminals. And then I uh, use a shrink tube that way you get uh, Nice strong connection and our uh, factory cable amount right on that one. So I'm going to go ahead, pull the headers out, get the old starter out of there, and we'll stick this one in there. So this should be fairly simple. You can see the uh, stock starter down in there. And then I'm also going to go ahead and drill and tap this here. Helicoil that front one uh, so we can put a 3 8 bolt back in there. This one here has been... Uh, Drilled out and just nutted and bolted. I seem to remember one of these other ones wasn't in the greatest shape either, so we may do that on that as well. But uh, get this unbolted, get that yanked out of there. All right, so I got the header unbolted, just laying there. And if you've never done this before with the headers, you can't get the header out without pulling the starter. You can't get the starter out without pulling the headers. So what you got to do is kind of let this hang here, and then you can access your three three bolts in the back here. Once uh, you get that undone, start to roll out. You can pull your header out. The toughest bolt to get to is this top one here. Um, just with the way the part of the block sticks out here. So I found a uh, long extension with a quarter drive. You can get in there to hang the starter. I typically get these two started and then wrestle that one in last. So let's get this pulled out of here. All right, so you can see here, I'm actually using my 3 8 drive on this here with uh, eight inch extension fits perfectly in there to get to that upper bolt on the rear just coming through the uh, little tubes here all right so with the last bolt out i find it's easiest to roll the starter over this way and then you can uh, just pull your header straight up and out all right so back on the bench here you can see the obvious size difference between the uh, mini and the stock starter there and hopefully uh this terminal location here should be a little a little bit further back which will help and uh, the overall size difference too will help with heat soak issues may end up adding a heat shield down the road i've got one on the 460 truck out there which runs a factory mini starter but um i think we should be okay on this one um, like i said this is just uh old stock unit uh rebuilt at some point it's getting old and tired and uh for the cost difference between these two i think uh we'll be a lot happier with this one so i drilled this out to 2564s which is a bit for uh the coil tap using lots of rapid tap go slow and then we can thread our insert in there all right so i got the helicoil installed on that top one there so we're all good so I can get rid of this uh, washer that's stuck on there. Um, clean up the flange on my header. Got the uh, starter in. And we can tuck our gasket on and bolt this back in there. All right, so I got the header in there. Just hanging by the two lower outer bolts. That way we can slip our Renflex gaskets in. These are quite thick. Um, you do want to be gentle with them. This one's got uh, a little bit of crushing on it already, but... These are going to squash right down and uh, give us a good tight seal, which is what we want. Like I said, I've used these in the past. I've had really good luck with them. doesn't matter which way they go. They've got two sides. But uh, once it goes in there, it squishes out. 
Uh, we do have some irregularities on the head there. It should help fill that in and it should be leak free. And also giving the bolts a uh, good coat of copper and he sees before we stick them in there. And for anyone who missed my video about uh, chasing threads on parts like this, this is why I can barely get my hand in here, but I can thread this in no problem. And uh, you don't have to fight to get everything lined up and try and get a wrench in there. You can pretty well snug everything up by hand. So don't make it harder for yourself. Take a few minutes and do the prep work. And you'll save yourself a lot of time in the long run. And not to mention a few swear words. All right, so there we have it. Starters in, headers are back in with new gaskets. And uh, I went ahead and pulled the driver's side, put the Remplex gasket in there as well. And it's definitely 100 times easier getting the header in with this uh, Ford steering box as opposed to the Bendix. The Bendix, it took me about 20 minutes of wiggling and jiggling to get it past there. This one here slipped right in, so. I'm gonna go grab the keys. See if this old girl will fire up. She's been sitting for probably uh, a good month now. So, cold start time. I guess it's not really cold. It's uh, 20 degrees and beautiful sunshine. All right, here we go. See what happens. All right, so we had a failure to fire there. Checked all the connections. Everything's good, but uh, this connection on the start terminal here, a little sloppy. I'd cleaned this out previously, uh, it was pretty corroded in there, so I'll give that a little squish and uh, stick it back on there and try again. I have a feeling that's our issue. Um, that failure to fire was definitely the uh, connection at the solenoid there, so we'll just have to keep an eye on that but I'm pretty happy with that um, certainly frees up quite a bit of space in there and uh, should eliminate any possible issues with heat soak on the starter so I think that's the last project I really needed to get done um, before we go ahead and put the front clip back on core support bushings and bolts are on their way should be here early next week so I think next weekend we will uh, pull this rotten old core support out get the new one in and we can start piecing things back together with the new inner fenders and uh, I got to finish patching up the other fender get that ready to go so that's all for today as always thanks for watching we'll see you next time